let's see, I started, I was there May or fall of 93, and then I think I finished up in about May of 96. And I was thinking about when I was talking to John and Stan doing the videos of how I first learned about the group. And it may have been when I was an undergrad at McGill doing, as what most of it seems people were doing, undergrad physics degrees. I had the opportunity to work at the National Research Council in Ottawa doing room acoustics, working with John Bradley. And at that time, maximum length sequences were the big thing for measurements. And I remember there's issues about the dynamic range you could get in, in measurements and stuff. And I remember, I think John Bradley then put a paper in front of me and it was by given by by John Vandercoy and Doug Reif on the MLS method. And I also remember, and I don't know if Peter remembers, I think it was that summer, so this is like the early 90s, visiting Peter in the other acoustics lab with John Bradley's dodecahedron speaker that had tons of distortion and what was the causes of poor impulse response measurements. So I guess from that, that kind of led me to know about the audio research group and it kind of, well, I should do a master's there and work on impulse response measurement methods and distortions and what happens when the systems are non-linear. So that was my research there. And I think it was everybody else has talked about, it was like a great environment with experimenting with stuff and the theory. Um, and y you learned a whole lot about audio and the other people that, was, that were working. Like Jeff was there at the time, Rob Bonamaker was there, and another Mike Truman had started up when I was finishing up. So you got a broad range of like exposure to what other people were working on. And that was like since then, after I left Waterloo, I did a year teaching in the States, but then went back to Ottawa and the National Research Council and then was doing acoustic measurement methods in the building research group for like airplane noise, wall transmission facilities and room acoustics. And then kind of got the idea of going back to school and doing a PhD. So then I kind of switched and went more to audio and then joined the Communications Research Center in Ottawa. Did uh, more audio related work with codecs, subjective testing, some room equalization techniques and got more into broadcasting and then standards work and now I'm working for Dolby in California and doing a lot of, unfor well, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but I think as I told Stan today, you kind of get into the standards work and you can never get out of it because once people know you're, you're able to do it, you get sucked into it. So I'm doing a lot of that now and I think the whole exposure to the wide range of audio fields helps like in my day-to-day -day work dealing with research and engineering all the time. So I just like to thank like John and saying it was an awesome opportunity and I think this was a great event tonight. So thanks. <laughs>